Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, if you see me uh, sweating here or you hear the fan uh, running over there, uh, the air conditioning is working in my butt here, but uh, not enough. It's because I took my monthly uh, shower. And when I take my monthly shower, I sweat for about an hour and a half, like a pig. So I have to put the, this right here. Air conditioning is on, but because I miss you so much, I'm not going to wait an hour and a half to uh, make a video. So I cut the line and I'm going to see me sweating. Anyway, so what's going on here? We have a, a little article here coming from Reuters telling us, I think, the obvious uh, deadline or when the war in Ukraine will end, according to the Russians. Obviously, the other side has a different uh, opinion on and, you know, plans. But we're going to see how the foreign minister of uh, Russia, or Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov, will make his point on uh, when he thinks the war will end. I think that that is based on reality, but it's still only their view on how it ends. Because if you look at the other side, they are merely based on Hollywood uh, hype and ignore reality to a very great extent. That is, you know, pick and choose and then give us a scenario. Uh, you'll see I'm going to make my point after I read what Lavrov has to say. Uh, that that doesn't mean that these are the good ones and those are the bad ones. Because they are good and bad, good and bad. There's just a proportion between that. And sometimes you do good things, sometimes you do bad things. The problem here is these guys are always doing the good thing. The other ones are somehow always doing the bad thing. So... From the very beginning, you understand how this Hollywood movie is created by these guys. So, let's see. This, uh, this article comes from Reuters, and uh, it is from today, Wednesday, July 12, 2023. Russia's Lavrov says that Ukraine conflict will not end until West drops plans to defeat Moscow. For uh, people on the left, the people on the left, right here, they would say, that, that's nonsense. What do you mean? What do you mean uh, the, the West drops plans to defeat Moscow? That's not why the West is involved in this. The West is involved in this to defend the helpless victim Ukraine against the unprovoked ruthless attack by bully Russia because Russia is an imperialist power and wants to create the Soviet Union. That's how the story goes. And, of quote, Putin is a criminal, bad dude. We are good and we just help everyone. Now, you know, if that's the, if that's the way you think, that's fine. I'm going to show you how these guys are seeing uh, the situation from their point of view and from outside of it. Because, you know, if you just pick and choose, then you're going to get the wrong conclusion. You have to take all the evidence, put it on the table, and analyze it in a chronological way, very important chronological way. All right, so let's go um, and finish reading the article. It says here that the goal of the, and I'm quoting, US-led collective West is to strengthen its global hegemony, Lavrov told the Compass newspaper. Now, if you disagree with this, that there is such a thing as a global hegemony, attempted by the US, then again, uh, ignore the facts. And I, I, will, I will make my case, I'm just uh, uh, pointing out that I think that the US-led US collective West through NATO, through uh, G7 nowadays, through European Union being under the US's thumb, trying to impose wherever on this planet, whatever the US national interest lead. And that's fine. If you're strong, that's how life is. And I'm quoting Lavrov again. Why doesn't the armed confrontation in Ukraine come to an end? Question mark. The answer is very simple. It will continue until the West gives up its plans to preserve its domination and overcome its obsessive desire to inflict on Russia a strategic defeat at the hands of its Kiev puppets. And it says here, again, uh, I'm quoting Lavrov, 
for the time being there are no signs of change in this position. Let's start from reality. Each country has its own national interest. Should have. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, it's going to be eaten by the neighbors. That's how life is. We have interest as human beings. When you're a child, you're told that life is good, be good, share, you know, do the right thing and so on. Okay, and when you get into you know, adulthood, you realize that actually those um, qualities uh, are not really qualities uh, when they need to be. Well, how? You see bad people in positions of power and you wonder how. They shouldn't even be making it, right? It's like you go to swim and you don't have arms. And you say, how the hell this guy is the best swimmer and he doesn't have arms? Well, he's got an engine in, uh, attached to his butt. That's how he won. And you have only arms and legs. So then you say, wait a minute, I've never been told that cheating is a good thing. Well, or I knew that cheating is sanctioned. So how come that guy, that guy, that guy, even elected officials are there and they're dumb they're maybe not all there, but they're still presidents, you know, generals and so on. So then the worldview, that kind of worldview of all together and we make it, that's a childish way of saying infantile, infantile. That's why I think uh, the, it, it sounds good. It sounds beautiful, like you were children all together because mommy and daddy worked for you and defended you. You could imagine and be, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get in life, you realize you meet your fellow friends. They're not going to look for their own interest. They're going to be like, okay, Emil, here is my money. Take it. And now you give me my money and we put the money together. That's an infantile way of doing things. But anyway, communism caught, you know, a certain kind of strata of the society. So you have United States created its own um, uh, organization. Don't make a fool of yourselves. NATO is not an equal organization. No. When, when you heard, let's say, Bulgaria, part of NATO, saying, you know what, I propose this and I'm against U.S.'s decision. Wait, have you ever heard that? But I always heard when United States said something, everybody went and followed. It was never anybody else in charge but United States. So, that is the U.S.'s organization. Then, the European Union is taken over again by United States. Look who has troops, where and what. And again, see when United States wants to do something, how Europeans are opposing and see the other way around when Europe wants to do something US opposes it's like a veto okay so you, you know the dynamics of power in these organizations again you get the G7 the same thing when United States says something everybody is behind I never heard let's say uh, Japan saying something and uh, disagreeing with America and America said hey, you know what okay I think so never I'm pretty sure it happened but I'm talking about proportion and generalities so here we have um, I think, a worldview based on power and interest, which is one country, one nation, one people, money, and so on. It's not like we are one people here. Oh, we're all together in this nation. No, we are working, paying taxes, get that and some interest over there. Use all that to promote certain kind of interest based on the power of this tribe, country. That's how it is. Uh, just look at this dynamic. The US military was used to promote economic interest of the United States of America. Like right now, NATO seems to be used, NATO army, <laughs> used, uh, seems to be used in order to promote the economic interest of America, European Union, if America doesn't get that first. It's always it's like the lion. Lion gets the lion share and then after the lion gets fat and moves away from the loot or the prey, then everybody else is coming to eat. That's how it happens. Look around. Anyway, so United States of America and NATO still there. Warsaw Pact, not there. Look what happens in, the East, in East Asia. Now you have Germany even bringing troops to Australia. Germany. They're talking about creating an expanding NATO, <laughs> North Atlantic uh, organization, right? Uh, in the... Far East, they're expanding, not the organization as we are together. Interest where they can plant whatever they want in order to destroy competition. Russia, China, competition at this point. They need to, they challenge the status quo. Now, Russia has its own interest, like United States and so on. The problem is, see, 
When you are with a neighbor and the neighbor comes too close to you with the weapons and that NATO is not trustworthy because you have Yugoslavia, you have uh, Iraq uh, example, you have Afghanistan example, you have Syria example, you have Libya example, you don't look at the neighbor as a defensive organization but, but you look at that as hegemonic. But anyway, you are accused of being, you know, um, uh, trying to dominate and create the Soviet Union because it's easier always to point fingers and keep everybody here. Hey, hey, hey no, no, don't, don't, don't promote that. Promote that thing over there. So NATO expanded, expanded, expanded towards this, towards Russia. And I'm going to show you on the map. And you look at the distances. Distances of rockets being able to be to be launched. If you get closer to a target, the reaction tar, uh, time for the uh, enemy is shorter. You shorten it. So it's like, for instance, if I'm far away from you and I want to, I know, throw a kick or a punch, you want to see it because I have to make one, two, three steps, come in whatever I do. So you have time to prepare, to observe what's going on. But if I come close to you right here and I'm with a fist right here, Right? <laughs> you have less time to, uh, to protect yourself and to react. And besides, this guy is going to hit this, but he's not going to hit me because I'm far away. I'm across Atlantic. Well, you're going to go over the North Pole, but it's a different story. But that was the problem for the Russians. You come too close. And I'm going to show you the map. And I'm going to name countries and you see what I'm talking about. So let's get this little map of Europe just to see that who's coming in whose neighborhood. So this is the map how it used to be, Europe. And you have here Norway. I'm talking about the NATO countries, how it, they used to be, let's say, 1991. I say Norway, you got half of Germany, you got Austria right here, right? And then you got uh, uh, Greece, you got Turkey. That's all you got. And then everything here on this side. So you were far away from Russia. You have this buffer zone, which is half of Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, uh, Yugoslavia, how it used to be, Bulgaria, all this, Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic states, all this were Finland, Sweden, were buffer zones. So the fist was far away from here to destroy anything here, was far away. Now, in the meantime, these guys advance, pack, pack, now they are right here. You see Finland? They can put right here. Uh, launching uh, missiles, power, whatever they say, def air defense systems. Okay, uh, they can put it right here. They didn't do it yet. They put in Poland. They put in Romania right here. So you see how close they got. They got from here, from here. They got to here. Now they want to bring it here in Ukraine, right here. You see how much closer they are. That's half of continent closer. And these guys, we're seeing more Moscow, is these guys should not say anything. If you say, okay, we'll take it. No, they won't take it. So that's just one aspect on what Lavrov is, what Lavrov is talking about. You guys, your record, your record tells us how defensive you are, as I mentioned the countries before, that you brought democracy and you intervened without the United Nations uh, uh, you know, any um, authorization which makes a bombardment of Yugoslavia illegal under international law that these guys like to say. So he says, yes, you actually, it shows to me that you are coming towards me. I'm not coming towards you, but somehow I am the imperialist power, not you. Because you make it sound like, well, it's voluntary. It's voluntary, man. It's voluntary. Well, it is voluntary. That's true. That it's voluntary. But was it the... Ukrainian decision to do what's doing right, is right now voluntary? And people say, yes, 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 you just invade over there. Well, again, evidence and chronology of events. And I'm going to bring you back to 19, um, no, to 2014, 2013, 2013, 2014. What happened in 2014 in uh, March, April, February? It was a so-called whatever revolution again organized and supported by whom? And a democratically legitimate, a democratically elected legitimate government of Ukraine was overthrown through force, through military, pop, 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 people died. Supported by whom? By the defensive, uh, okay? Give you just Vigoria Newland's phone call. That's one of them that you can look into. So you, 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 this 
how, how do you call it, uh, destabilized Ukraine, and then you expect these guys just to stay and say, okay, yeah, you can bring whatever. That's how Ukraine became what it became towards West lapdogs. Not by elections, not by elections. So everything that followed after that, the government, the elected governments of Ukraine were elected without a lot of people that did not vote in Donbass, in Crimea. And so they took Crimea. Well, I have to mention that Crimea, Crimean people were uh, agreed to break, break away from uh, Ukraine through a referendum and, and to be part of Russia through a referendum. If you remember, Kosovo did not conduct a referendum. He just said, we're going to be independent and we're going to just de de determine that. So which one is more, you know, democratic? Anyway, I know people again say, well, uh, you know how those, uh, those uh, referenda were uh, held. How? Well, come on, we all know. No, we don't. Well, you know, the Russians over there, so were the NATO in uh, Kosovo. We're, we're good. See, everything goes to that. Na again, national interest. You are across Pacific. You come in this guy's neighborhood and these guys are supposed to just take it. So I think you can say clearly that there's an interest to come closer to Russia. Not Russia come closer to you. Evidence, historical e events, Chronolo chronology of uh, events and so on. So yes, the war will end if Russia does not splinter, does not collapse uh, politically. If they stay as they are, these guys will not win. Now, if something happens inside, uh, you know, and this guy assassinate that and the military takes over and so on, then yes, Russia is gone forever. These guys are not gonna let Russia grow again at all at all and uh, from from the other side obviously they will try to do it and wait and they keep feeding uh, us with the same narrative that these guys attacked um, this and that okay but you ignore so many other things russia has four goals in ukraine four and they told them don't come too close yeah well, we are we freedom okay freedom uh denazification according to the russians there are a lot of nazi elements in um, Ukraine, and remember, before February 24th, 2022, even the Western countries were uh, running articles about that, Azov Battalion and all that, but uh, regiment, and now they're called nationalists. They're not called, uh, as they called them before, somehow we just uh, change a coat and now there's something else, but underneath is the same thing. So, not denazification, demilitarization, that means, no, the, uh, Ukraine will be neutral will not be ours, will not be yours. We're going to find a framework and say, no, 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 no. We want them to be us because we want the will of the people. What about Crimea, will of the people? What about Donbass, will of the people? Well, they voted the wrong way and they were under your influence. But in Kosovo, we are good. It's okay. They voted the way we want them to. Therefore, we recognize it. How is that? You, you can't see clearly that you are considered a bad one. You are considered a good one. Why? Because of your interest? We got the same thing, my interest, your interest, and they collide. Where in this, uh, in this situation, in finally, uh, would have happened sooner or later in uh, Europe. Would have been an another incident. So that's denazification, uh, demilitarization, the recognition of those parts that voted, uh, no, referenda, to join Russia. And the other one is what? We're going to all live together, no NATO. You're not going to be part of NATO. Basically, these are the main ones. And Russia will not stop short of any of these uh, goals to, uh, to reach. you see, unless it just splinters. So Lavrov obviously says, when you guys are going to stop trying to buy countries to get closer to us, why do you build that? Against whom? Why don't you get Russia into NATO? Remember, the conversation was between Bill, Cl Bill Clinton and uh, Putin. Remember? No, you don't remember? Well, okay. Oh, you're too big, you don't need to. Because Putin told him, hey, uh, maybe one day we can join and be... No, 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 I don't think you need... <laughs> what are you talking about? It can't be two guys leading. It's not going to be a, like a Roman Empire, Eastern Roman Empire and Western Roman Empire. Even that was divided clearly on two different empires. It can be only one which is United States. So anyway, my friends, now you know, and it's very obvious that if Russia stands, 
doesn't collapse, these guys will eventually have to do something because uh, a lot of uh, their resources is going to go to a war and you're going to have people and life um, standards of living going down. Econo economically, Europe is in a uh, what uh, regression or how do you call it? A, uh, <laughs> you know, is not uh, is not doing very well. United States either inflation is uh, is high, so we'll see. We'll see which one collapses first economically. That's what's going to be. Or if something happens in Russia with some weasels uh, trying something like an explosion inside with from within. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.